What's up, brothers and sisters? We're back. What's up? Okay, God's showing us some great things. Amazing. A amazing. And the great things are the great solar eclipse, the great catch, the great feast, the great day of the Lord. And I woke up yesterday morning and I heard, prepare the table, prepare the table, prepare the table. I couldn't shake it. I just kept hearing it and it was downloaded on me. Prepare the table, prepare the table. And I was like, wow, God, sounds like it's time for the wedding feast. You're telling me, prepare the table. Tell the people, prepare the table. And then all of a sudden, I heard, don't be concerned about the day because no one's going to know the day and hour. Like I said in my word, prepare the table. Go out and start inviting the people straight up. So we know the parable about the great feast. It's Luke chapter 14. And it's like this. You know, we could keep trying to figure out the day, but we never will. But we know the season, and we know the season is now, and the day is fast approaching. So what I'm hearing from God is to go out and invite the people. So last time I was out there talking to a homeless person about God and Jesus and telling him about the great feast, he told me, yeah, it's crazy because word on the street, all the homeless people, you know, I hang out with them all day long, and I've been hearing them talk about Jesus coming more than ever. And it just rocked me. And I was blown away. And I still am. Because that's the word on the streets. So what God's telling me is prepare the table. Invite the people. I've been asking people, hey, do you know Jesus Christ? And, you know, 90, 95% of the people, almost everybody is like, yeah, I know who Jesus Christ is. You know, I believe in Jesus Christ. Well, now God's telling us all to invite the people. So from now on, this is what we're going to do. We're going to ask people, hey, do you know Jesus Christ? And whether they say yes or no, we're going to say, well, check this out. You're invited to the wedding feast, and he's coming. So I'm actually a seasoned photo shopper. I used to do photography and work for the NYFL, doing foot, youth football and pictures and all these things. So I'm going to design a wedding invitation that's a flyer. And I'm going to try to print up at least a thousand of them. Um, it's probably $89 or something. You could find somewhere to do it. And honestly, um, I'm going to make it available so anybody can receive this image. And they could print it on their home computer. Or you guys could go to Kinko's or you guys could look it up. And there's tons of places that print flyers and they're cheap well somebody's got to do it and if we all believe that jesus is coming right now then now's the time to do it this is what he's telling me to do this is what we're gonna do i hope everybody jumps on board and we can start inviting the people you know first off invite your friends your family everybody you know that's pretty much how the parable goes and then after that we invite the poor and the people on the side of the road, you know, study Luke chapter 14 and think about what I'm telling you. You know, we're supposed to be watching, but our Messiah says no one's going to know the day and hour. So we have to pay attention to the other things that Jesus is telling us to do besides watch. John 21, Jesus says, if you love me, feed my sheep. Matthew 24, Jesus says, no one knows the day and the hour except the Father. And Jesus says, if you do say in your heart, the Lord delayeth his coming, and if we smite or attack our fellow servants and eat and drink with the drunken, then the Lord will come in a day and an hour you are not aware of. So all that tells us is that we're supposed to watch every day and every hour. And God is so good. Yesterday I was watching a video from Todd, it is finished, and he was talking about sounding the alarm in Ezekiel 33. So I just happened to go to Ezekiel 33 but that's not where I ended up it's like a 3d pop-up book I know everybody knows about those books you see them with when you're kids I go and get led to Ezekiel 34 7 through 12 and this is what it says therefore ye shepherds hear the word of the Lord 
as I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves, and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding at the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep, that he scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. The dark and cloudy day of the Lord. So if you study that, the point is we have to feed the sheep. There's other things that we have to do besides watch. You know, I love watching. That's what we're supposed to be doing, even though we'll never know the day or hour until it's it exciting. happens. But and we know Jesus can appear and rapture us any day or any hour the Father chooses. So finding the date of the rapture is irrelevant, and no one will know the day until it happens. And when we get raptured, the date won't matter anymore. We'll be with Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. So we're supposed to watch every day. And we're supposed to watch the sun and the moon and the stars. And that's what we're doing. But Jesus didn't say to try to figure out the day of the rapture. Once again, Jesus says, no one knows the day or hour except our Father in heaven. We already know it's the season. So it's crunch time. And if we're trying to figure out the date, we're wasting time. We could be using to do all the other things that Jesus said to do. Like John 21. If you love me, feed my sheep. And Matthew 24. Give them meat in due season. And Jesus says, blessed is that servant that is feeding his sheep when he comes. He don't say, blessed is that servant that figures out the day of the rapture. He says, stay sober and alert. He says, watch and sound the alarm. Don't get caught up in the cares of the world, he says. You know, Mark chapter 4. And we are not going to get caught up in the cares of the world, but we are going to keep watching and showing you what we are seeing. But we are not going to pinpoint a day or hour because we believe the word of God and only the Father knows that day and hour. And praise him for his word and telling us these things so we know. And Acts, you know, chapter 2, 17 says that he'll pour his spirit out in these last days and we'll have visions and dreams. Praise God for that. That's another reason why we know it's the season. The body of Christ has never all been together thinking that Jesus is coming and being shown all these visions and signs until now. In John 10, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. And I'm one of them. And he's telling me, prepare the table, prepare the table, prepare the table. Go out and invite the people. See, this is part of the Bible. And somebody has to start inviting people to the wedding feast and telling them, look, Jesus is coming and you're invited to the wedding feast. It's part of the prophecy. My brothers and sisters, we love you. It's true, though. This is what he wants us to do. This is what he called us to do. This is what he chose us to do. He chose us to watch. He chose us to feed his sheep. He chose us to invite his people to the wedding feast. That gives them the opportunity if they want to choose this world like Lot's wife or choose Jesus. And I'm going to tell you right now, if somebody came up to me and they handed me a flyer and said, Hey, I just want to let you know you're invited to Jesus Christ's wedding feast. I'm going to tell them, let's go. I'm there. I'm there. That's where I want to be. I'll drop everything I'm doing. I just got the Holy Spirit when I said that. I felt it all over. I got the holy bumps on me. And there's other things that we could be doing too. You know, if you can't print up flyers or you can't go and tell people they're invited to the wedding feast, you can sit there and pray. Um, you could bless people. You could forgive people. Um, there's a million things in the Bible. All different ways saying what you could be doing while you're waiting for Jesus to come. Luke 21 says, pray that you're worthy to escape all these things that must pass and you're able to stand before Jesus. So, you know, I 
suggest that we do that every day. And yes, we do know it's the season. The word specifically says when you hear them say in peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. And it's coming and all of you guys know it. Well, yesterday when Mike Pence arrived in Israel, I heard Netanyahu say peace and security again. You know, this has been going on for a while, a year or two. How long do you think before Jesus comes and raptures his people and sudden destruction comes? And yeah, you can read that in 1 Thessalonians 5. And there's a lot of people, I'm sure, that you know, and they don't understand what's going on. You're trying to tell them, and they're just mind-boggled. They're like, whatever, I don't even understand it. Well, Daniel chapter 12, verse 10 says, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. That's why you guys are understanding, because you're being purified, and you're wise. Praise God. And keep praying for wisdom and faith and mercy and love and all the things that God cares about. So, like I said, there's other things that he wants us to do while we're watching. And if you really want to get to know Jesus, I'll tell you right now, he's out there. He says it in Matthew 25. You know, when the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Well, we know that he's getting ready to come. How do you go out to meet Jesus? Hmm. God showed me this. It's in the Word. Matthew chapter 25. When you get down to past the talents, he says, if you go and you feed the hungry, it's just like feeding me. You're feeding me. When you give them something to drink, you're giving me something to drink. That's how you go and meet them. And it's crazy because people are being arrested for feeding the homeless right now and the poor. I've seen people getting tickets and videos of it online, but that's what he wants us to do. If you want to go visit Jesus, make a couple sandwiches and go hand them to the homeless. Ask people if they're hungry and feed them. Ask them if they're thirsty and give them drink. And you're giving it to Jesus, and in doing so, you're storing up your rewards in heaven also. And if there's somebody sick, go visit them. It's just like visiting Jesus. It is visiting Jesus. It's in the Word. You know, if you know somebody that's in jail or prison, same thing. Go visit them. The Word says that you're going to visit Jesus. So that's how we go out to meet them. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. And I feel the Holy Spirit on my shoulders. I just want to share that with you guys. Um, and as you read the Word, you'll fill up on the Holy Spirit. It's the bread of life. It's the living word. It's Jesus Christ. If you really want a picture of Jesus on your wall, just put a Bible up there or a picture of a Bible. He is the Bible. He is the word. That's Jesus. So when you're out there doing that, invite him to the wedding feast. You know, this is just a suggestion. You don't have to do it, but this is what Jesus says to do and this is what we're going to do because it's in the word. So my suggestion is, is... Even if you don't have any food or drink to give them. Guess what? When Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, Satan tried to tempt him. He told him he could have everything. And he told him, you can't live off bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So you can feed him with the word. The word is the true bread anyway. So that's awesome. God is so miraculous. And I bet you it'll make you feel good when you hand them some food or you tell them the word and then you tell them, look, there's something even greater than that. Jesus died for our sin and one day he's going to come back to get us, to take us home to a place that he prepared for us and we'll be able to serve him, we'll be served by him. And there's no words to explain how great that is. Jesus is almighty and since he died for our sin, and he loves us so much, me personally, I can't wait to see his face and tell him thank you. And what better place to tell him thank you than at his wedding feast. So yeah, he's telling me to tell everybody that we should be inviting people to the wedding feast. Literally. And if I'm hearing that, and I am, then how close do you think the rapture is? Do we need to look and see, oh, you know... 
I can guarantee that he's coming on the super blood red blue moon, or I can guarantee that he's coming on Passover, or, you know, April Fool's Passover, or, you know, Pentecost, or September next year. It doesn't matter. We know he's coming. So most of you already know most of this stuff. So let's pray for a Christ like mine, like Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. And focus on the other things that Jesus told us to do besides watch, while we watch. And we know the super blood red blue snow moon is something to watch for, but Jesus could come today. And if Jesus does come on the super blood red blue snow moon, then that means we have a week to go out and do what Jesus is saying to do. And invite the people, prepare the table. But what we don't want to do as watchers is lead people astray. And, you know, if I'm telling you, oh, I know the rapture's on the 31st for sure. You know, and set a date. And this is the rapture date. And Jesus comes today. Then I would be leading people astray. So we have to live every day like he's coming today. And every hour like he could come that very hour. So we want to watch, but we don't want to spend all our energy on watching because there's other things that Jesus said to do, as I said, and we'll give you another one right now. James chapter 1 verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. And I know a lot of you... The children of God, our brothers and sisters, have already been doing this stuff. And I just wanted to make it very clear what we should be doing while we're watching and waiting for Jesus and preparing the table because the wedding feast is coming, family. And we're going home to be with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. It's the great feast. Praise God. Praise God. And as I'm telling you this, my phone is running out of memory. So we're going to come back with a part two, preparing the table, the great feast, Jesus Christ's great feast. But I'll just give you the heads up now. Obama, the Antichrist, he's having an Obama dinner. They changed the Jackson and Jefferson state dinner. And now they're calling it the Obama state dinner. And it's February 3rd. It just happens to be three days after the super blood red blue snow moon. So I'm not going to say no date when Jesus is coming or anything. But I will tell you, Satan tries to counterfeit God. He thinks he's above God. He wants to be above God. You know what it says in his word. So this is nothing new to you guys. But yeah, if you listen to my other videos... I had a dream that he was the Antichrist and he was going to a dinner when the rapture was about to happen. So we'll see you. We love you guys. God Bye. bless you. God bless. Love you. Probably tomorrow.